Good evening. We are live at 7 o'clock. I'm Stone Grissom and welcome to our live coronavirus pandemic special report. Well, tonight we have a doctor from Cohen Children's Medical Center to help you sort through what's going on with COVID-19 in our communities and across the region. And we always want to hear from you. This is a call in show, so call us 516-393-1800. All right, let's get right to it. Governor Cuomo says the worst is over if New York stays the course. Now he says the death toll here continues to flatten, but it's doing so at a what he's calling a horrific, well, the numbers just show it, horrific level. Easter Sunday saw 671 deaths. That brings the state's mounting death toll to more than 10,000. Nassau Executive Curran says Nassau has been on a plateau for about a week now, but COVID-19 has claimed more than 900 of its residents. An additional 50 fatalities in the last 24 hours. That brings Suffolk's total to more than 560. That's according to Suffolk Executive Steve Ballone. Now, the number of cases for those who test positive for the coronavirus still on the uptick. Across the state, there's now more than 195,000 infected with the deadly virus. In Nassau County, where Executive Curran says hospital discharges have been outpacing the admissions, that's the silver lining. However, the downside is there are 24,000 confirmed cases in Suffolk, not too far behind. That's reporting more than 21,000 COVID-19 positives. And when is New York going to open up for business? That's a big question. Well, today, Governor Cuomo announced he and five other Northeast governors have joined forces to plan a reopening of the region. Now, he says each state will name a public health and economic official for the state. Those officials and the chief of staff for each governor will then form a working group that will start work immediately on redesigning some kind of reopening plan. And Governor Cuomo's handling of the pandemic is also getting him a bit of rock star status. His leadership role, it's landed him on the cover of Rolling Stone magazine, if you can believe that. Cuomo will grace the front of the magazine's May 5th release. He talks about what it's been like leading New York's response to the coronavirus. And the cover story, it's titled, Andrew Cuomo Takes Charge. All right, blood tests for the coronavirus, that could play a key role in deciding whether millions of Americans can safely return to work or even school. Our kids are still out, but the antibody tests are unregulated, and that's creating a bit of confusion. That may slow the path to recovery here. The tests do not require FDA approval for sale, but health officials say they won't use them until they've been validated by independent laboratories. That process could take several weeks. And state lawmakers normally meet in Albany from January to June. It's not June yet. Well, with two months to go in the session, the pandemic may bring the session to an early end. Lawmakers we spoke with say there's a good chance New York's 200 plus lawmakers will not return to Albany this year. All right. That's the background. Let's get right to our discussion. Joining us tonight, Nancy Palumbo, Division Director of Pediatric Hospital Medicine at Cohen Children's Medical Center. She's joining us again remotely from her home. Uh, we appreciate your time. You guys, uh, again, I, I, I say this every night, but it, I can't say it enough. Thank you so much for everything you are doing. Uh, let me start off by uh, asking you, how are you and your colleagues holding up? Hi, Stone, good evening. Uh, thank you for uh, having me this evening. Um, we're, we're hanging in stone. Um, it is certainly a very difficult time, uh, unprecedented uh, for sure for us. Um, amongst this you know, difficult time, I think the um, most wonderful thing is truly the collaboration, um, especially for us in the Children's Hospital, collaborating with our adult colleagues, really um, helping them in any and every way that we can um, to get through this together. Well, uh, we're hearing from the governor and uh, from the two county executives here on Long Island that we may have hit a plateau. Now, we know that that doesn't automatically go down. We don't know how, how wide the plateau is. Uh, are you seeing that uh, at, at your hospital? We are seeing that. We are seeing that. Um, certainly, it's difficult with all the um, unfortunate number of deaths, but we are seeing um, more of a plateau in terms of the number of admissions. And is that, uh, are you crediting the social distancing that everyone's doing? Yes, I think the social distancing, the stay at home, the uh, hand washing that we keep talking about, I think all these efforts are, um, we're, we're now seeing some of those results. Okay, um, let's get right to the phones and uh, get a couple calls in here. Uh, Jeannie from Sayville. Jeannie, are you there? Jean Jeannie, yes. are you there? Yes, I am here. Th yes. Thanks for calling, what's your question? Uh, thank you for taking my call. Uh, I was wondering, is it necessary to disinfect groceries when bringing them home from the supermarket? 
Uh, doctor? doctor? Sure. I can Hi, Jeannie, thank you for your question. I think um, it's a good idea to, um, you know, go ahead and, and disinfect, you know, clean the, the outside. Um, if it's something that's packaged, um, you can certainly, you know, soak your, um, whether it's your vegetables or, or fruits, um, you know, that's also a good idea. Um, so I, I would continue to do that. W would you recommend people wearing uh, masks and gloves when they go to the grocery store? I think, you know, definitely masks are, are a good idea. Um, gloves as well. I think just be mindful with your gloves, you know, as you're wearing them when you, uh, you know, when you're done to go ahead and remove them, um, you know, not to touch your phone with them on. Um, and certainly I think a mask is, is a good idea. Um, and of course, to socially distance. Okay. And I know that there's a proper way to do it, like doctors do it. You doff the, is it called doffing the, the, the gloves when you take them off? You fold yeah. them out inside out? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, let's go back to the phones. D from Ron Conkerman. D, you there? D, are, are, are you there? Okay, let's uh, let's try to see if Zachy from Bethpage is there. Is this Zachy or D? Okay, we're uh Say yes, hello? 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 Yes. Is this Zachy? Yes. Uh, Zachy, good, thanks for calling. What's your question tonight? Um, um, can, can you get COVID-19 twice and be asymptomatic? Uh, good question, doctor. So as of right now, we think that if you have COVID-19, have tested positive, that you are um, not likely going to get it again for this period of time, for sure. So that if you've definitely tested positive, you should be quote unquote safe from getting it again, at least for this, you know, during during this pandemic for sure. Mm -hmm. Doctor, let me ask you this. Uh, we've been reporting that uh, the antibody testing, uh, it doesn't need to be approved by the FDA because they fast tracked that, but it needs to be what's called validated. Can you explain in layman's terms what, what, what exactly uh, is required here? Sure, we just need to make sure that the antibodies that um, we're testing, so you know, they go ahead and collect your blood and, and check for these antibodies. We just need to better understand those results in terms of is, are you now immune for a prolonged period of time or a short period of time? Um, once again, to sort of get back to that question of, you know, will you ever get this again or could you get it again next season? Um, so I think that's what we still have to uh, figure out in terms of if you're immune, for how long? What what does that mean? What you know is this antibodies that you're protected forever, or is it for a short term? Okay, um, let's go to Donna from Farmingdale. Donna, you there? Hi. Hi. I would like I would like to know. Like everyone is saying that businesses will be open by on uh, this the end of the month. Yes, how do they determine that? Oh. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I'm not sure everyone's saying that, but I'll let you respond to that, Doctor. Sure. I mean, I think there's many factors that are going to go into that in terms of uh, reopening businesses and, and schools. Um, I think, um, you know, it. I'm hoping, of course, it will be done mostly when it's safe to do so. Um, and I think, you know, we, we all want to make sure that things are done in stages um, just because we are, of course, concerned, right, that we could potentially see, um, you know, a resurgence or this tremendous amount of folks that now become infected if we just start, you know, um, resuming um, kind of our practices like we were a couple of weeks ago. So I think it, it'll be done cautiously is, is what I suspect. Yeah. Um, Sharon from Quorum. Sharon? Sharon, you there? Yes, I'm here. Uh, what's your question tonight? Uh, the question was, I was sick for 10 days with a fever, and every time I called to try and get tested, I was never able to because my breathing was fine, but I certainly had something. So at what point can I find out, did I have it or was it just a bad flu? So I think um, once the antibody testing, once that comes is up and running, I think that is when you know you'll you would know. Um, unfortunately, you know certainly earlier on there were some struggles with testing um, and some limitations, um, which of course made it difficult for um, for the community. Um, I think much of that has changed, um, although 
you know, we're still really focusing on the patients that uh, require hospitalizations. Um, yeah. So, uh, doctor, let me ask you this, because I've, I've seen this reported uh, that some of the health officials are worried that in the southern part of the hemisphere, uh, we're seeing coronavirus numbers, but not in the pandemic numbers that we're seeing uh, up here in the northern part. Uh, they're moving into their winter as we move closer to our summer. Uh, is that a worry? Because I'm hearing that we may see a second wave come around as we go into fall because of that spread as it starts making its way back up north. I hope not, Stone. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. Um, I, I can say, Stone, that you know our experience, um, at least in the New York area. Um, you know, I, I'm a, a pediatrician, um, and so certainly for our kids, our experience here in New York has been different than in other parts of the country right. um, in terms of their experience with kids. Um, not, we're not really clear why that's so, um, you know, but we're certainly having a, a different experience here. We are seeing more kids hospitalized than in other parts of the country, and certainly our kids are sick. Um, you know, requiring uh, admission and even uh, ICU level care. Now, are, is, is part of that, uh, or, or, or does it affect your ability to get the uh, virus if you're a vapor or a smoker? Does that make you more susceptible? You know, certainly in our kids, um, we have not seen that. Um, certainly it was something we were concerned about. Um, and I have not seen anything reported in the adult, um, in our adult like population as of yet. Um, but uh, certainly in our kids, we're really seeing those with comorbidities, um, our kids who are immunosuppressed, and we've also seen healthy um, adolescents get very sick. Okay, um, we're going to take a real quick break. Uh, where we're going to have more expert advice on how to keep you and your family safe from the coronavirus. And remember, we want to hear from you. Call us right now with your questions. That number right there at the bottom of your screen, 516-393-1800. If it's busy, just call right back. We'll answer. We'll be right back. Welcome back to our live coronavirus pandemic special report. Uh, let's bring back in our doctor, Dr. Nancy Palumbo, Division Director of Pediatric Hospital Medicine at Cohen Children's uh, Hospital Medical Center. Um, doctor, we were talking before the right before the break about uh, the rates that children uh, seem to be a little bit higher up in the New York area than the other parts of the country. Is that higher than the 2% that we were seeing uh, in China? Um, it's probably ab about the same. Um, I just think that, you know, certainly when um, we started to see cases in the United States, you know, in, in uh, reaching out to other states, um, they were seeing much, much less, um, at least kids that required hospitalizations. And I think, you know, we here in New York, at least at Cohen, um, you know, have, have seen a bit more. Um, and especially, I would say, those that are, you know, late adolescents, early adulthood um, are, you know, is really a population that, that uh, we've seen a bit more requiring hospitalization. Okay, and I, and I guess you, and you speak to this as well. Um, one of the dangers is not just, it's twofold, really, that kids can get it, and they're also, the fear is that they're carriers for it if they, if they get it and are asymptomatic. Right. Yeah, right. so, um, so they, they can affect the vulnerable population. Um, let's go back to our phone lines. Luke from East Northport. Luke, are you there? Yes, I am. Oh, what's your question? Mike? Okay, my wife and I both got all our pneumonia shots. But let's say we get the coronavirus and we get in serious situations. And having that pneumonia shot or both of them, will that prevent us from getting the pneumo uh, pneumonia? So, um Thank you so much for your question, Luke. You know, a lot of what we're seeing um, is really the um, the pneumonias, the the effects on the lungs are really primarily from the virus. We're actually not seeing um, a lot of bacterial superinfection or co-infections. Um, we're really a lot of the damage that's being done to the lungs um, and the difficulty breathing is really coming just from the virus. Um, so, so it, the, it's great that you have the the shots the, the um, for against the bacterial pneumonia, but we're not seeing a lot of bacteria on top of the viral infection. Okay, uh, and just to follow up on that, doctor, it should 
people, you, you see conflicting reports out there. Should people be looking not just for pneumonia shots, but uh, try to get their hands on other drugs as a prophylactic measure, such as uh, the hydroxychloroquine, we keep hearing about that, or any other home remedies? No, you know, I think that certainly if um, folks are at home and are starting to have symptoms, they really should self-quarantine, um, reach out to their provider by phone um, to discuss the symptoms that they're having and, and seek further recommendations. But I wouldn't really take any um, hydroxychloroquine prophylactically at this point. Okay. Um, let's go to Jackie from Mastic. Jackie? Hi. Hi. What's your question? Um, I want to say thank you for all that you're doing. And with the uh, surgical mask being in short demand, if you use it to go to the store, but you'd like, you don't go back out again for a week, is it safe to reuse that mask? You can, um, if you go ahead and uh, store that mask in, you know, a plastic baggie, um, you can go ahead and, and reuse it again. Um, I would store it, put it aside, um, or, you know, there's lots of, um, you may have seen, there's lots of great videos on how you can create masks at home. Um, so certainly you can you can do that as well. Okay, uh, Charlene from Hopak. Charlene? Charlene, you there? All right, let's go to Diana from Ronkonkoma. Diana? Hi, how are you? How are you? What's your question tonight? Okay, thank you for all that you do. My question is, if someone is diagnosed with COVID-19, how long are they contagious for? And after having the virus, how long is the recovery process? So um, the recommendations are really to quarantine uh, for, you know, at least 14 days. Um, certainly, you know, connecting with your, um, your provider, um, you know, just because if at any point your symptoms worsen, you may need to be evaluated. Um, so certainly keeping in touch with your provider by telephone, many of them are using telemedicine, is a great idea. Um, and what was the second part of that question? Oh, in terms of how long the symptoms, it's difficult to say. Some are really, um, you know, bouncing back very quickly after a week, um, and some are taking a lot longer to bounce back. So it's, um, it's difficult to say for sure how long. Uh, doctor, l let me ask you this. Uh, I think our viewers might uh, be interested. In how, how, what special precautions are you taking? I mean, you're really on the front lines. Uh, th any advice that you could give? I think um, really it's important to uh, following, you know, what we keep saying in terms of social distancing, really staying at home. You know, we can't emphasize it enough to really stay at home and hand washing, you know, wiping down those surfaces that we frequently use, those doorknobs, um, you know, at home. I, I think um, that's certainly something I'm practicing and I know all my colleagues are. Um, and so we, we can't emphasize it enough to uh, please stay at home and socially distance. Okay, and real quickly, are, are you seeing a, a, a shortage of blood for blood don donations right now? Uh, we are not experiencing any of that um, for our kids and I believe our adult colleagues are okay as well, I believe. Okay, well, Dr. Palumbo, well, I appreciate your time. Uh, you, you really are the heroes uh, for all of us and we really do appreciate this. I, I, I say this every night and I, I mean that because I, I feel like I'm speaking for all of Long Island when I'm saying that uh, you guys really are doing a fantastic job and we appreciate it so much. And I thank you so much for taking the time after what must be a very long and treacherous day in, in the front field. So uh, thank you so much and thank you, our viewers, for your calls. And we're gonna be back at seven o'clock tomorrow, so call us again. You're watching our coronavirus pandemic special report. We'll be right back.